Hello YouTube, I welcome you on this fine day and today we are going to play Kaikar Wind's Fury in Historic Brawl. This deck aims to win by storming off with various enchantments such as, and this is the most important one, Anointed Procession and Thousand Year Storm and Underworld Breach. Um, the deck is tied together with a Sweet Adelic Tutor, uh, 20 something cards that draw you cards and almost no meaningful interaction at all. Rounding off to be a very nice deck, a really fun deck to play but not something I would, uh, re would recommend competitively. Gosh, that was hard to say. Um, Anyways, uh, also this deck is, it's basically Storm, it wins on turn 5, uh, like usually around turn five if I have the pieces um, and I'm going to misplay a lot I believe like I've piloted this deck for like 20 games plus now and I do like storm and whatnot but it's always uh, a bit difficult to play like you if you ever like want to play a storm deck you really have to learn that specific deck and it's yeah there are a lot of lines overall um, such as, uh, remember that the Anointed Procession doubles your tokens, so it basically doubles the manner Kaika grants you, but also the tokens from Pirate's Pillage get doubled, so that is essentially a gain two mana draw two for discard one uh, card, so that is pretty nice. Um, there are some sweet little pockets of synergy here, like Warlord's Fear and Crash through are free with just Kaikar and gain mana with Anointed Procession. Like, you just send this deck into Overdrive with this specific card, and your most, like, early turns really want to, um, like, you want to search for this card. Um, also, we have Glorious End, Chance for Glory, and no way to prevent us from losing the game, such as Tales End or Discontinuity. Um, because in my test I in originally included Discontinuity, Tails End and Card Sample Sundering, but they were too slow and too niche and it's usually Procession, Extra Turn, Win and right, that's your play pattern that you usually want to see. Um, furthermore, uh, we have Mana Rocks because those net us mana, but we don't run the three mana ones because don't, those don't net us mana. Uh, during combat turns, that is, Tormod's Crypt is free. Um, like there, it is a free non-creature spell, which is relevant because that nets us mana, and it can go to the um, graveyard by itself, which is also relevant for Underworld Breach. And other than that, um, yeah, let's uh, see how we punt, um, and I will see you in the upcoming games. Uh, see ya. Oh. oh. Kaikar versus Kinnan. I'm inclined to keep this hand just based on the shock. And I think that's correct, right? Uh, we don't have a lot of blue at all at our disposal, which is annoying. And I think I'm just going to shock the Curiatid. Because that's going to be annoying otherwise, right? Um... May like Siri Okay, that's a mox if I Oh that's not a mox. Nice. Um yeah, let's just keep stay mana efficient with the thirst. Um so I haven't uploaded for one week so far, and the reason for that is A I've been grinding uh Amoncat uh, remastered to get all the cards to give you the content, right? Um because I do spend money on this game, but I also need, like, I just don't want to spend it mindlessly, if that makes sense. I kind of want to be efficient my, with my money that I actually spend. And another thing is, I haven't been too impressed by Amakat Remastered. Uh, two lands. Uh, like, I, yeah, I think two lands. Yeah, but because while yes there are like so many decks get really nice improvements and there are some really awesome cards in Ammo Country Mastered I like from a new deck perspective there are not too many decks like this is a new deck that's enabled by another procession and strategic planning is the other new card from Remastered but I think that is it for that set but procession is obviously the, one of the key cards and also I think I want to ramp. 
Um, also, the other thing is um, that yeah, the other deck like is is um, the Naya commander, the new one Samut, and yeah, like other, just not too impressed with the new possibilities we have here. Shadow Course Torbot Script or like Torbot Script lets no Chance for Glory lets us go off the hardest. Um, and we do have a lot of filtering because we just go Kaikar uh, Chance for Glory and then just win with if we draw the procession. Um, well, we obviously can't do that next turn, you. Okay, that just we just try to go to procession now. Um. Try to find the procession now. Yep, see the truth or shimmer, shimmer. Dig, digs deeper. Try to find the procession now. Um, so how many did, cards did we see? A ton, right? But like we didn't see procession or the idyllic tutor. Um, unlucky, right? It happens. Um, I'm going to grab the land, so I am guaranteed to have the because, like, whatever I'm going to draw, like, I have so many discards that I can pretty much select what I want here. <clears throat> if we draw procession, that would be nice, right? We also have the double white. Yeah, we have two white to make that play. We, we don't have too many white sources because it doesn't come up too much, but yeah, let's see ton of mana from our opponent. Um, we could just go Kaikar into chance and then just risk it. And that may be reasonable, depend if I kept count of how many cards I actually drew this <laughs> turn. Um, but for now, I think I'm just going to um, see the truth here. Um, I, I'm going to take the fetch land because it is fuel and uh, like it's the best land to play here. Oh fuck! Oh, that was oh my god! So that was a big misplay because we had so many cards on the bottom that now we re greatly reduced our chances of um, drawing the procession. Yep, that, and we play the thrill as well. Okay. It's not looking too hot. It is not looking too hot. But at the flip side, if we do draw procession, we just instantly win. Um, right? So that is pretty nice. What's that? That is lethal. And it wouldn't have been lethal if we uh, actually um, played the card on the turn to do the thing. Narciss reversal. Yeah. Kinnan, once again. Um, also, somebody needs to uh, track how many cards we actually saw that game. Uh, the previous one where we just whiffed. Um, do we keep this? Okay, here's the thing, and tell me in the comment section what you think about this. I am quite reluctant to mulligan with this deck because the card quantity in my hand is so relevant to the game plan, but at the same time I want to find my two pieces. Um, I, I think this is okay, but... I can just maybe try to do better, right? Thomas Crypt, I believe, is the pick to go to the bottom here. Or maybe the Reversal. And Crypt goes off harder, but a Reversal... Oh, well. Let's pick the Reversal here. Um, Do we... I don't think we need that. We already have a White Source. Um... Yeah. Okay, uh, that and we like the reunion will probably discard the crypt. No, we we oh well, we planning anyways. Uh, arcane signet seems nice. Just ramping out and then I can play two drop, night like, two, two drop spell next turn again. Like if I draw land here, I discard the land and the crypt. Uh, because signet uh, land uh, discard. Uh, we just draw this. Okay. There is an argument to be made to hold both of these, and I think it is relevant. Like, if I, I I'm not casting any of these now. Um, 
because okay yeah, I'm not I'm just going to drop the processor just silently going to do that uh, because if they can't remove it I win yep they are desperate don't have a bounce effect don't have a meteor golem don't have it nice we finally win oh is it long it will to be fair, this is Storm. The, the win is never guaranteed, but oh boy. Oh boy, is it going to be juicy. And the trauma script is really relevant here. So let's just... Play you. And we sack these immediately, pretty much, because... Um, sure. I, I think it's quite good to save our, uh, like, blue mana is really valuable in our turns, so we're going to discard the op because we have better things to spend our blue mana on. And that is my basic idea here. And we still have a land drop to make, that is also relevant, right? But, um, Tormenting Voice will, oh my god, um, game plan, oops, uh, gameplay, Auto tap off. Uh, drawn from dreams. Go. Yep, there is a mox. And we don't. We don't play the land here. We're going to discard it to the. Uh, to the reunion. Okay, that will likely do it. But not 100% sure. Because... We cycle the land, right? And we just basically need to get something here. No, I'm not thinking. I, I'm selecting the things to do the thing. Yeah. And then we just... Chance for glory. I think we can put it um, auto tap off now and we can cycle that next turn right or we could just play no I, I'm just going to hold it to discard it to the um, Kaikar okay in this case we just discard those yep you 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 and you swan song please draw something good game Yep, draw more, that is not good, we are whiffing. Um, draw, give me something. That is what I called something. Oh baby. Um, so we have, this is, I think this is the best thing to get. This is sorcery. Or maybe, okay instance also remember when we cast those out of the graveyard we have to pay the cost so we have to, to discard something um so maybe it's best with all the mana we have to just pick the drawn from dreams and an instant right so uh yes the thrill and the drawn is probably better. Just the digging for the um, underworld bridge is what I really want in this case. Yep. Also should have put the into the other order because it's relevant for what I search here. Um, this digs deeper though, right? So we take this pretty much. Um, we still have a land drop to make, but. Uh, let's just dig. Uh, we can cycle the mine stone. Uh, right, yes, mine stone. Draw a card. Oh man. It is not looking nice, guys. Uh. Yep. Underworld, like, we just need to find Underworld Bridge, basically. Oh, nope. There we go. GG. Because now this... 
finds the breach. And that is good game. Yep, sacrifice. And you're going to click a lot of spirits with this deck. This is also a thing, right? Because now the breach, like, the storm doesn't win us the game here, but the breach lets us never whiff, basically. Because we have 22 cards in the grave. And also a thing that you need to know is... Wow. Also thing that you need to know is um, Storm keeps track of uh, in Snow Sorcery so you have played previously this turn. So it doesn't enter and just says, oh yeah, here you go. Uh, it's one, two, three time. No, it is uh, five, six, seven time when it enters. So we play the chromatics here from the graveyard to um, filter our mana to white. Then we are replaying the idyllic tutor. Um, Yep. Uh, with... Uh, yep. This... Just eggs all those. We're replaying the Adelic Tutor with the Underworld Breach. Getting the Thousand Year Storm as well. And... Then we are just going to filter our mana with the... A chromatic Sphere in this case. Or maybe... No, I think it's faster to just... Pirate's Pillage, right? Yeah, it is It is just faster and better for mana to just go for the Pirate's Pillage in this case. Um, I don't need you, I don't need you, I don't need you. Yep. Okay. That also generates a ton of tokens. And Thousand Year Storm hits the battlefield. Um... Or maybe I just want to go with another Pirate's Pillage? I think I'm just going to loop the Pirate's Pillage a bit. Um, yeah, I don't think I need the Glorious Ant here. Uh, that is one, two, and three. And there's the Shock. So now we... Uh, Drop the Thousand Year Storm. And now we can shock and shock, shock, shock from the graveyard again and again. And that is good game. I want to select that, please. And that is good game. So that was a decent line of play. We almost whiffed, right? And that was really clutch. I'm not sure. I think I want to run less lands. At the same time, I don't want to miss land drops. But I'm just drawing so much gas in this deck that I am... Like, yeah, I think we we'll want to cut lands. But another thing to note is, while constructing the stack, I had to have problems to actually put in draw spells into the deck. Um, because the like the draw spells I want to put in the deck, like we have basically all the, the two mana draw spells I want, right? I, I pretty much don't have any left because there is, is such a limited card pool in his Torrid Brawl. But just tell me what you think should um, go into the stack, basically. Okay, and we ping the opponent to death. GG! Today is Simic Day because we are going to play against Simic all day, apparently. Um, I mean, this is a really good hand, right? I draw, 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 but that's basically pretty much what all my hands look like, so let's find the sweeter draw effects first. Uh, I guess. Glorious Ant can just be really... Oh, yes, and the Lightning Strike. Um, I am inclined to just name Red with this. Yeah, pretty much. Nice. Um, okay, Lanoa Scout. That is a pretty obvious, ob no, not even that obvious, but really nice inclusion from the Tatiova player here. I am... I think I'm more than happy to just pick a land in this situation. Um, I'm fine with that. Like, I don't need the reversal. Um, don't see the point. 
Okay. Um, we do have a few colors at our disposal. I'm not too sure. I think I'm going to just cycle the irrigated farmland. No, I. No, you know what? I'm going to go with the island pass turn classic play. Because if they put a land into bed, like yeah, right. Um, oh, I should have maybe swan sunk that. To be honest, a little too late for that now. But I am going to just shock their Tachiova, probably. Uh, not shock, lightning strike it. Okay. That doesn't work apparently. They're... Yeah, they want to play with Karuspell backup. Which I respect, but I also have the Swan Song for that. So I'm going to play the Thirst for Meaning. Um, likely keeping the Glories and around. Maybe it like, depends what I draw, right? Um... Thirst for meaning. Okay, idyllic cure is obviously what we want to draw. I have three lands. I guess I can get rid of one of them at least. And I don't think like this is obviously just netting me mana with kind of like that just lets me go off. Um at this point I ask myself, do I really need the lightning strike around? They have probably so here's the thing. I wanna have the swan song to counter something. Right, because I'm going to Idyllic Tutor and then, um, you know, I'm going to discard the farmland because that's an untapped land. I, I want two untapped lands in this situation. Um, then maybe just the Lightning Strike, yeah. Because I'm just going to crack Passage, get a white, and play the Idyllic with Counter Spell Backup, and then have another land drop and play the Kaika with Counter Spell Backup, uh, the, the, the Session with Counter Spell Backup. Um, yep, procession, and I think I'm just going to, s no, no, that's, I just talked about that, god damn it. <laughs> I'm not going to cycle that, because it is mana when I need it. Okay, the Tachyoba player is going off now. If I draw a mox, or, yeah, if I, if I draw exactly a mox, I can't just glorious end them, but I think that's not going to happen. Kaika versus Anointed Procession. Let's just play the Kaika. Yeah. Let's see, and we just chill now. If I had more mana, I would just try to... Like, I wouldn't even Glorious enter their upkeep because I think they have counter spells. I would Glorious end when something relevant happens. And then protect it with the Swan Song. Okay, um... Yeah, no. Um, I'm going to Swan Song that. Because that just draws them a ton of cards. Potentially gets them a lot of untapped lands and pop off. But this way, just no. Um. Okay. Okay. We 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 are popping off because now we're just going to take our chance for glory. Um. So I don't have white obviously now, but the chromatic sph uh, sphere can fix that. Um. And I think I'm just going to do. All these shenanigans in the next turn. Don't know. Let's see what I draw first. Um, sure. And then just go with you. And that just nets us mana in the end, right? And we do no need to pop off harder than we are currently, like in this turn, because we can just go into the next turn and win. Yep, attack in with the indestructible um, Kaikar also. Uh, chance for Glory gives the creatures indestructible permanently, so if you counter the Chance for Glory lose game trigger, you 
Okay, the surrender. Um, yeah. Um, if you counter the loose game trigger, um, uh, they stay indestructible, which is pretty nice. And I think I would have won. So let's think this through. What was in the graveyard? So, oh yeah, because we would have added it to the grave and get the breach. GG. Our next opponent is going to play Corvold. <clears throat> um, John Sacrifice is a bit too interactive for my taste, but that's the case with pretty much every deck. <clears throat> now you see, this is probably a mulligan. No draw, well, except Chromatic Suit, but yeah. Mm, this is better. Mox Amber goes off. Swan Song can protect. Arcade Signet can ramp. I'm, I'm fine with that. Oh my god. Okay. At least it's not landlords. <clears throat> That's pretty nice, though. We are ramping. Um, one more color, uh, red or uh, white. Either one would be fine here. Uh, Memorial is great. That's what I want to see. I don't think I will like counter something with Swansong pretty much ever in this case. So I'm just going to. Mindstone and then Arcane Signet later um, because then I can use, like, if I totally tap out for this, I have still one blue open for the Swan Song. Right? So I want to get the Mindstone out when I can because the Arcane Signet is better to drop in combo and protection turns. Um, sure. Oh, I think I'm going to just Signet Ramp and uh, and step Thirst for Meaning. Gilded Goose making a food token, which is a reasonable play. They have not doing anything too much here, so that's great. If I... If I draw a Tutor, that would obviously be great, or like the Anoint Procession. Um, Mox Amber allows for some really, really degenerate turns. And yeah, we will see. We will see. Also, maybe I'm just anticipating, but I think Thirst for Meaning is probably better, uh, like, mm, mana efficient wise, right? Cobalt, okay. Yep. There you go. Um, Drawn from Dreams is exactly what I want. Land? For sure. For sure. Um, and I think I can bottom the Anticipate because the crash through helps me go off in combo turns and Drawn helps me to get what I want anyways. I sack the food. Yep. Double cast into Drawn from Dreams. Now that's spicy. God damn it! No double cast into drawn from the themes. Now that's not spicy, isn't it? That's also total garbage. Right here, right? Guess I take the sulfur faults, but oh my am. Going to cycle the crash through here. Oh my god. Ugh. So that mess kick probably cost me the game. Yep, sure. You got it. Oh. So this is the exact scenario where I'm tilting. I don't care if the opponent is lucky or unlucky, if I'm lucky or unlucky. I mean, that's magic, but this was just plain stupid. Okay, they're not greedy. Um, yeah, I'm likely to lose the game off of that because now I can't, like... Uh, <sighs> oh boy. That's your pulse, okay. That is fine by me. Um, this searches for a white. 
Yep. And I guess I'm just going to drop Kaika here out of desperation. And I think I can drop the Mox Amber as well. Um, I know it's more mana later on, but this way I can... I don't know. No, I can't do anything. Oh, yeah, I should have hold it, probably. No, it depends what I draw from the opt, right? It always depends. Swan song, yep. Don't like that happening. They don't have red anymore, which is great. Hey, epic downfall. Uh, we will opt in response to create more. Um... Nope, not you. Create more spirits, and I think I'm going to block the cobalt while I can. Hmm. I also don't know if I should cycle the chromatic sphere in this case. Yeah, I think I, I have to like, like not die here, so I'm preemptively gaining effectively the life from the cobalt here, and I think that's worth that one mana, because I think that will re will result in one extra turn, at least. Okay, signet, and nice. Okay, um, some spicy stuff is coming up. So if we drop the storm and I think, so the more risky, pl I don't know, right? The Maelstrom Pulse is already gone. Um, if I drop this, like if I drop either Kyker or Storm and live one turn, I win. So the question becomes, uh, what do I want to actually drop here to, um, Oh, that, that is least likely to get removed because that just gets hit by Rex Age. Um, Casualties of War always kills me. Um, Vivi uh, the old five mana Vivian. Kaikar also does to, dies to that though, right? So that doesn't matter. Uh, I think they have more spot removal. And let's just gamble. If they have it, they have it. If they don't, they don't right makes sense so that's one two three four five six no you don't can't even go double oh well okay here's the thing if i drop kaikar i can't drop kaikar into double casting that okay raska sure they take the mind stone i guess you should leave before I make or maybe they plus and try to find an answer no, they take the Mox. Uh, Mox is worse than Mindstone here to pick. Because the Mox can get be brought back for free. And the Mox is also not active with, with the Storm, right? Because now what happens is I'm just actually just using the Thousand Year Storm without any other shenanigans. To try and win that way. That will be interesting. Yep, they sack more. I don't think they will ever come up to 18 power here, um, or maybe 15. Like 15 is concerning because of lightning strike or something like shock and one more, right? But I don't think they will ever come close to that. Bajuka block, uh, what gets exiled? Okay, um, nothing too important, but the card quantity is what matters. So our underworld breach just became significantly worse, but they should have like they could have really messed us up with this play um if they just held on the reclaimer so big misplay from them big happy from us uh, sure and yes uh we actually don't have red oh we do right that is yeah, we do have red. 
Because now we we go chromatic sphere into double cast into Pyrus Pillage three times. Right? So now we do this, go into red. Um Yeah, double cast. Discard the mountain. And then just copy the Pirate's Pillage three times. Which is pretty nice. And here, here is the thing, right? We can just... We obviously just play the retreat here and we just go into Kaikar and have... Or things, or we can just go... I think I'm just going to try to come... Like, if I go into Finale and that just is also almost lethal, right? No, Underworld Breach is the, the real payoff here. And this is, like, we just need to get Underworld Breach and pay, play this from the grave. Oh, it's not happening either way, right? Yeah, we just don't have mana. So, uh, let's go for this line of play. And we let those coppers, so, like, in case we want to, um... Oh, that is perfect. Yeah, that likely wins us the game. Right? Yeah. Because now we go ch Chance for Glory. And... Oh, yeah, that is a few extra turns, but only one of them matters. Um, yeah, we discard... Uh... Yep, and we go into extra turn, play Kaikar, and win the game. Yep, GG. Our opponent is going to play Nicobol as the Ravager. And this is not a hand I want to keep, so I'm not keeping it. Easy, right? They go first. Hmm. Yep, free mulligan. This is not too bad. It's not the best, it's not the worst. It's okay. Okay. Discovery. Yeah, sure. Discover a bit. We are going to opt. Um, mm. Okay, a thousand year storm, and we have the pirates pillage. And enchantments are really annoying for them to deal with in their those colors. Guess I keep it. Not too sure. Uh, Chart of course seems. Like the nicest card overall here. I don't think I will need the shock in this matchup. Seems unnecessary. Um, Dragon Sword, sure. Um, we play this, we do that, we do things. And we hold up Thirst for Meaning. What are we actually discarding? I guess I wanna discard the thrill because then we have a two mana sorcery and two mana instead we can x equals to the finale so one of the discords is likely going to be thrill uh no a uh, thrill and a land is fine to be honest yeah oh swan song is nice obviously so we could just go Pirate's Pillage and then ramp into Thousand Year Storm, but I don't think that is too efficient because then we don't have the Pirate's Pillage in hand to play out the Thousand Year Storm. Um, I think I'm just going to Shimmer. See what I get. Maybe pick up a land. Um, yeah, sure. I, I, I mean, I can just anticipate as well, right? Or, or maybe the Triome. Now let's just anticipate and wait a bit. 
and like I'm, I'm very very likely to just pick a land of anticipate if there is nothing really good here if they make me discard I am going to anticipate in response yep oh oh yeah drawn from reaps is really good so what's the worst card here I think I'd rather cast the strategic planning than the see the truth and I think reunion is really valuable because it's red and that's relevant for Kaikar turns. So I'm discarding the see the truth. Um, Drawn from dreams is pretty nice. Underworld region, a bunch of lands. Um, maybe the caves is relevant but I, I feel like I want just breach and a good land, if that makes sense. Um, just going for the breach and play you tapped. Um, we don't have anything that, like a Tormod's Crypt, would be the best draw, probably. No actually, no um. Steel. Cathartic Reunion seem, doesn't seem that great right now. Draw the cast of strategic planning that digs deeper and also digs more. Okay, they take the breach here. They have to take. They like okay. So if they just pl like if they don't take the breach here, um, that tells us they have to counter for storm. Um, if but if they can't deal with the thousand year storm, they should take the breach. Uh, they should take the storm. So, oh, Swan Song. Oh, that tells me something. <laughs> that is very interesting. Um, I'm hoping to just go with Nico Waldos here. Would be hilarious. Uh, I mean, we're just going to chill, right? We are just chilling. And then we go into extra turns, something glorious, and just something. If we draw get procession, that would be nice. There is a procession, and the Thomas script goes to the graveyard, which is really nice. And they dis the exile, and the exile dis counter the procession. Very, very likely, at least. Oh boy, they don't. No they fire, don't. No steel. Has to be double cast though, right? Uh, everything else has just so much value right now. Mm, we just force out the Kaikar. Here. If they counter it, they counter it. Sure, that is fine. And um, I'm currently considering to play the Chromatic Sphere and then just cycle it. And I think that is pretty nice. Yeah, sure. We don't play the land here, we, because we are going to discard it to the Angrath. No fire, yep. No steel. Lathless. Oh, that's an opening if I've ever seen one. Um, how many cards in grave? That is quite threatening, though. Can't quite win because we're not generating mana. If, I, if we had obviously two more mana, um, like a Mox, Torbot script, anything uh, of those. Like a Mox would have won us the game in this spot, I believe, because of Breach. Can we still Breach off into Oblivion? Um, it's hard to gain mana now uh, without the Kaikar on the field. If we go with a thousand year storm, we can just go double cast, shock, double cast, shock, right? Like shock, shock, shock into storm. How much damage is that? I don't know. Do I care? I probably do. Um, if I go into pirate's pillage, I set up for a lot of mana next turn and that goes well with Kai current breach. So I think I'm going to do that. Just get out the pirate's pillage in this case. And I'm going to hold up both both uh, cards in hand because they Angrath here. 
Oh wait, fuck, I'm just dead. God damn it. Because Angrath is actually has actually an ultimate. Right? Yep, GG. Fire song with sun speaker. Let's do this. It is interesting to say the least. Like I don't they don't have a clock at all. And I don't want to give them a, a target for their exile stuff, right? Like some the white general right white removal. So in this case we're just relaxing, ramping up mana to play Kaikar and Chance for Glory in the same turn. Uh, we can actually discard the tutor in this case. But maybe we want to get the breach. Depends, right? Um We'd rather discard the glorious end, right? Shard course. Discard a card, yeah, discard the glorious end. And we just need to find a white source. So here's the thing. I know that the glorious end doesn't require white. But my problem is that if they have, and they do likely have that because they're Fire Song and Sunspeaker, if they have um, something like um, a lightning strike at instant speed, it's going to be annoying. And yeah, Thriving Isle is perfect. And that selects white. And we're just going to relax. Because, here's the thing, they're de decent at stopping what's on our side of the field. And I don't think I care if, I, if they have 2000 life or something like that, because I can just go for a line where I just let them draw their whole deck. Um, Kaikar, yeah, I need one more mana. Um, So the question becomes, I did to draw drawn from dreams now, and I think it's going to be the drawn. Chromatic Sphere and Crash Through lets it let us go off the hardest, right? Um, like, for sure it's the Chromatic Sphere. I'm not sure if it should be the Thousand Year Storm or not. So I go Kaikar into... can just wait a turn with Idyllic Tiro grabbing... Um, the Underworld Breach as well. Hmm. Let's, tr tr let's try it like this. And uh, play the tap land here. Hold off on the Chromatic Sphere because that is relevant for combat turns. No. Eh. I mean, it's mana neutral. So it, it didn't matter if we played now or later. Okay. We just go Kaikar into no we just we're just chillin'. I did look I don't think they will kill us. Breach Play the tap land. We play the sphere now. Like that gains us two Oh no. Yeah it is. It is more, more efficient. To use that later, right? I'm, I'm just, I'm just spilling nonsense. Of course it is. Resolve. And I'd rather. So here's the thing. I can just drop Kaika, right? Um. And go with the chance for glory, but if that happens um, and they have a lightning strike in hand, I'm going to be quite sad. So I am just maybe dropping Kaikar. Uh, and then the procession. No, no, not that. 
Okay, what does... Okay, procession in... Hmm. I think I have a line. If I go Kaikar... Into... Yeah, Kaikar into Chance for Glory. Then they bolt the Kaikar. So I will let this go to my end step. Most likely. Okay, here's my thinking. If I drop the procession, they bolt the Kaikar, I am sad, right? I, I want to play the chance for glory this turn. If I do something now, um, it gains me one less mana, uh, as opposed with the procession on the field, but I don't have to pay them. So it's, it's the same thing if I do this now without the procession or if I would do it next turn with the procession. Um, now the question becomes, do we just chance for glory, or do we let it go? Um, so if we go into end turn, uh, it's hard. Okay, I go into Chance for Glory. I think that's the play. If they remove Kaika in response, um, I let Kaika go to the graveyard and bring it back with Underworld Bridge. Okay, no, they don't have it. So I win. Good game. Oh, that is you. Yep, you. Oh, it also didn't have my mana correctly. Sorry for that. Uh, hopefully that doesn't cost me the game, but I won't think it will. So notice how Kaikar is indestructible, which is lovely, right? So, more of that. Oh, yep, you. Thousand Year Storm and Underworld Breach assembled. Um, so that's probably... Um, game can just proceed to draw a bunch of cards here and I think that's what I should do right um oh, I can just take an extra turn because I can just go chance for glory again and at the end step with the lose game trigger I can let that go away with the glorious end um Okay, so how many cards do I have in Grave? Uh, that is... Seven, so that's... Shock. I don't want to exile the Shock. Or maybe I do. Right, um... I think just Drawn digs me super deep. But that exiles one, two, three, four, five, uh... Yeah, if I go... Okay, if I go Warlord's Fury into... I, I, yeah, I, I just do this, right? I just go exile this, exile this, and exile this. So I draw another card, and f f like most importantly, it gains me mana, and it is going towards my storm count as well, um, which is quite important. Um, that filters mana to blue again. <clears throat> And now I can undrawn for dreams, uh, sacrifice the bauble and sacrifice those cards. I'm just going to do this. And how many triggers do I get? What's my storm count? Yeah, two. That's opt for sure. But I don't think I will cast that now. And farmlands. Okay, that that wasn't too hot at all. Oh, that is very very hot. That is game. Because so here's the thing, I, I have the lethal in theory with the shock in the graveyard, but I just don't have enough cards in the graveyard to exile with the shock. But this should probably do get me there. One way or another. A Thomas Crypt is another card in the graveyard and is also um a ritual. And yeah, and I see it. We have it. GG. 
That is it for the gameplay. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And um, yeah, it was a pretty glorious until the end. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, I... I feel like I did a lot of misplays, obviously, with the deck, because you do have uh, quite a few choices here and there. And I would love to um, know from you guys, uh, like, what, like, how should have I, um, like, I could have played this better. Like, in general, in terms, like, mulligan more, mulligan less. Well, can't really do that because I barely mulliganed, right? Um, because I feel like. I can discard so many cards that I like one useless card is not that bad and I, I really want to have the card quantity in hand. Another thing I want to note is um, how I constructed the mana base in the deck because I think that's very neat because I only need the one planes for these and the Kaikar uh, and um, I've cut the um, like I'm running these at the bare minimum and blue white like because Here's the thing, I am rarely needing red in the deck because Kaika produces so much red and the Thriving Owl can give me the other colors I need and I'm running this cycling land but not the other was others because I have so much red and this can just help cycle in combo turns when I need the card. So just neat interactions here and there. Um, another thing is um, like I'm... I think it would be correct to go with like less lands and maybe more cantrips but at the same time we don't really have more cantrips available to us funnily enough because I don't want to go too many three draws because those go mana negative with Kyker and are not free. With the procession on the field I really want to minimize that. I also would like to have more red draw spells in the deck but that's pretty much all of them. <laughs> Right, I could use Ryle, but I don't look like Ryle because I can only cast that if Kyker is already out on the field. Um, yeah, and also I think I've stated that before. Um, I'm not running Tails End and Discontinuity and Constable Sundering just because they're too expensive. But if I'm taking an extra turn, I usually win there anyways, right? So, or if I'm taking an extra turn, I'm so desperate to take that extra turn that even if I counter the end game trigger, uh, when it goes to their turn again, um, I lose. So, yeah, that's why I'm not running the cards that prevent me from losing the game with these. Uh, overall, um, on another topic, um, I am going to upload a bit, uh, like I have two choices for my next video, either Goblins, which doesn't have anything to do with Amonkhet, or I could use, um, show you the new Commander Samut um, in action, uh, but my main gripe with that is the fact that um, I am not yet too comfortable on the build. I think there is a lot of to optimize, but maybe we'll never get there. So write me in the comments um, what deck you may want to see next. Um, yeah, if you want to support the channel, please uh, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Um, I would really appreciate you guys commenting because you guys already do that, but I, I love to read your comments. So uh, yeah, it, it's great. Um, sorry for not uploading for pretty much a week, but um, yeah, the grind was real. I have all the cards once and uh, we can start brewing basically. Um, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.